Hi, it's Kernatex here with a new series of videos about tracking the performance of the Linux kernel on the new 12th generation Intel Core, which is Alder Lake, codenamed Alder Lake. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because the architecture of the 12th generation Core is a hybrid um, design architecture. There are performance cores which are similar to cores that have been available on previous generations of the x86 and then there are efficiency cores, e-cores, which are I believe based on the Atom architecture so that goes back about 10-12 years when the Atom was introduced and the Atom architecture itself is based on uh, P4 Pentium 4 architecture so you could argue that's got quite a long history in its own right and the idea is that lightly threaded or light uh, processes or intensively threaded processes go on the um, e-cores and the heavier more computational or computationally intensive processes go on the p-cores the performance cores so it means that the operating system needs to know what cores to put what sort of work uh, or where to send the work the threads onto which cores and to help with that Intel has part of the chip uh, designated as something called the thread director and this uh, tells the operating system basically what cores are available and where threads should be placed. Now this capabilities, uh, capability has been built into Windows 11 already. Um, Windows 10 I believe initially did suffer some performance problems. Uh, I'm not sure if it still does or not. Windows 11 has had some problems as well with certain games not running. Um, I think it's DRM related stuff that's been uh, getting the wrong information or assuming the wrong information and failing to run games and things. And Linux itself, which we're interested in, uh, has no knowledge that it's running on a processor with different uh, core or cores with ca different capabilities. So when the CPU was released on the 4th of November, um, running on a Linux kernel would mean that threads could be dumped on any core and it meant that when you, when you run benchmarks in Linux, you get or you could get wildly varying results. So for example, um, the top of the range uh, 12900K or KF has eight performance cores which are hyper-threaded so that's 16 available cores, uh, performance cores and it has eight efficiency cores and in theory if you're running a program with nine threads it could be that all the time that program is running it's running on eight of the efficiency cores or all eight efficiency cores and one performance core and you'd get the slower result, a slower benchmark than if for example it was the other way around and you had eight threads on eight performance cores and one thread on one efficiency cores um, the benchmark then would be a lot quicker of course depending on the type of uh, work that was being done but that is a possibility um, as of today which is the 16th I think of February let me just check the date yeah 16th of February there's still no specific support for uh, the thread director in Linux although I believe coming sometime in spring mid to late spring Intel um, well Intel have said that they will be releasing um, patches for the Linux kernel into um, Linux kernel 5.18 I think it is which is due in mid, mid to late spring so uh, I think we're on 5.16 at the moment 5.17 is still to be released as a stable release I think it's in testing at the moment so it means 5.18 won't be released for a few months yet. 
So up until about a month ago, all that was available was um, some changes that was made to 5.16 uh, kernel, which meant that you could specifically make some changes to um, help the Linux kernel identify which were the best cores to run on. Um, and I'll be going through that change in another video. I won't uh, mention it any more about it here specifically, but suffice to say, if you have got one of these cores, uh, you do want to be running the very latest kernel, stable kernel, um, and if you're brave, uh, one of the late, uh, the newest uh, beta kernels um, for any additional support. But at the moment, if you're running anything up to 5.15.x, you won't be getting any advantages out of the Alder Lake kernel in terms of the types of cores. You'll obviously get the performance benefits that it's got with the number of cores and the cache sizes and so on, but you won't be getting any benefits out of whether uh, threads are specifically put on efficiency or performance cores. I've got some uh, screenshots of some marketing images that Intel have released and some information uh, f uh, about the product from the product briefs that Intel have uh, made available and you can get these from their website if you want to read in more detail. I'll show you some of the pages from these product briefs and the marketing screenshots. I won't dwell on them too much because uh, it's a bit, little bit more technical and I'm sure if you're interested in this sort of thing you've probably read about it or you know, watched other videos that go into more detail about the um, changes and the differences with Intel. Um, the general consensus seems to be well, the initial release has been the i9s and they're for gaming and the general consensus seemed to be that they're uh, quite adequate for gaming and in a lot of cases, in fact, probably most cases, I've seen recommendations that this chip is better for gaming than the current line of AMD um, CPUs, although obviously that, that could change any moment. And obviously that's from a Windows point of view. Now, from a Linux point of view, um, I would say these cores are a bit behind anything else um, from AMD that's the latest CPU purely because there's no support in the uh, kernel for them specifically. But as I say, this set of videos is, due to, is intended to track that and to um, see what sort of changes come about um, and hopefully you know, within six months, maybe a year possibly, um, as the changes come into the kernel will see some good improvements that, that leverages the um, different type of technology that Intel have released here. And I, I think Intel have been very brave with this. This this was probably a make or break thing for Intel, uh, but they've obviously done a lot of research and uh, it does seem to be a extremely good bit of kit, this, this new core. 